Hi, my name is Kaylee Hayworth, and today I'm going to be presenting you the life of Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn was born in Brussels, Belgium, with the name Audrey Kathleen Rustin. Her father, Joseph Victor Anthony Rustin, was an English baker, and her mother, Ella, was a Dutch baroness. She spent majority of her childhood in England and the Netherlands. Her father, a Nazi sympathizer, left the family and Hepburn referred to her father leaving as one of the most traumatic moments of her life. Her mother thought it was smart to send Hepburn and her two half brothers to the Netherlands to live with their grandfather. She felt that it was gonna be safe from German attack. In 1940, German invaded the Netherlands. Hepburn soon adopted the name Edna van Hemestrom. Her given name was co considered to be dangerous because it sounded English and indicated her British roots. By age 22, Audrey moved to Amsterdam and took ballet lessons with Sonia Gaskell. She then studied at the Ballet Rambert and supported herself by working part-time as a model. Rombert later told Hepburn that her poor nutrition during the war and the fact that she was relatively tall, she stood 5'7", would keep her from becoming the prima, prima ballerina she'd always dreamed of. Hepburn soon decided to pursue acting. During the make of Monte Carlo Baby, Audrey was chosen the lead role in the Broadway play of Gigi. It opened at the Fullerton Theater and ran for 219 performances. The last month of it running, it performed in San Francisco and LA. However, her first significant film performance was in the Dickerson film called Secret People, which was released in 1952. She played a ballerina and did all her own dancing. Audrey still remains one of Hollywood's greatest style icons and she's still well known for her grace and beauty. I'm gonna move on to the strengths and weaknesses that Audrey had. This one was a rather difficult topic. Trying to figure out strengths and weaknesses was super difficult. So I found that she possesses great talent for creativity and she, ver she shows her self-expression very well. She knows how to remain optimistic through the tough times and she's mastered the resilience to overcome many setbacks. She's considered the life of the party and center of attention. This is where her and I get along pretty well. Now with strengths, there's always some weaknesses and this one was a rather difficult topic. I couldn't find a bunch of weaknesses, which I think is pretty good, but also she was known as to be a social butterfly and some directors thought it could easily squander her talent. She lost focus and wasn't very disciplined. Um, also her morals and loyalty, unfortunately, were tested during the production of Sabrina she had an affair with a co-star, William Holden, and that, yeah. So the greatest film roles that Audrey Hepburn played according to Vogue Paris were My Fair Lady, which she played the role of Eliza Doolittle, War and Peace, where she played the role of Natasha Rostov, the Children's Hour, where she played the role of Karen Wright, and Funny Faces, where she played the role of Joe Stockton. Number four, on How to Steal a Million, she played the role of Nicole Charade, she played the role of Regina Lambert, and number two, Roman Holiday, she played Princess Anne, and last but not least, Breakfast at Tiffany's. The plot of Breakfast at Tiffany's is about based on Truman's Capulte novel. This is a story of a young woman who lives in New York City who meets a man and moves into her apartment building. 
He is with an older woman who's very wealthy but wants to be a writer. She is working as an expensive escort and searching for a rich and older man to marry. This is one of my favorite movies, and not just because we had to watch it for the class, but because it really is interesting to watch and see how it played out, not in the olden days, but how it played out in the older days. So next, I want to go back to her background and finish off the rest of her life. She married Mal Farner on September 24th, 1954. They met at a party posted on Gregory Peck, hosted by Gregory Peck, rehearsal for the play Odin began in January and the following September, they were married. She said they were inseparable and very happy, but admitted he had a bad temper. Rumors said Ferrier was controlling. However, a friend of Hepburn said, and I quote, I think Audrey allows Mel to think he influences her. Soon, well, not soon, but right after they got married, Audrey had experienced two miscarriages. One was rather worse off than the other. She fell off of a horse and onto a rock and broke her back during the filming of The Unforgiven. She spent weeks in the hospital and this is where she had her second miscarriage due to physical and mental stress. In 1960, she had her first child with Mel Farner, and, his, and the baby's name was Sean Hepburn Farner. Soon after that, um, Hepburn got the role for Holly Gotwell for Breakfast at Tiffany's. Hepburn referred to this role as the jazziest of my career. Holly Gotwell, got lightly, became an icon character for America cinema. December 5th, 1968, Hepburn and Farner divorced. After being married for 14 years, they divorced. Her son was quoted saying his mother had stayed in a marriage with his father for too long. She broke off all contact with Farner and only spoke to him twice more in her entire life. After the divorce, Hepburn quickly met Andrea Dotti and they fell in love and got married in 1969. Um, February 8th of 1970, she was pregnant and had her second child with Andrea. They named the baby Luca Dotti. In the same year, oops, my bad, not in the same year, in 1982, Dottie and Hepburn soon realized that they weren't a match perfected. After 13, after 13 years, their marriage ended, and it was due, due, it was due to Dottie having affairs with younger women. In the same year, Audrey Hepburn became romantically involved with actor Robert Walders. Although they never married, she referred to her time with him as the happiest years of her life. In an interview with Barbara Walters, Walters asked Hepburn why they never married. Hepburn replied, they were married, just not formally. Hepburn lived with her companion from 1982 until her death. So I want to move on to her legacy before I talk about her death. She won one Academy Award. She won. She was nominated and won an Emmy. She was nominated five times for a British Academy Film Award and won it three and was nominated once for a Grammy and won it. Continuing her legacy, Audrey worked and became a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF in the late 1980s. Hepburn decided to dedicate the remainder of her life to helping needy children and in uh, impoverished countries. Excuse me, I'm sorry. In 1988, she was appointed UNICEF's International Goodwill Ambassador. During the years up to her death, she visited many different countries, such as Asia, Africa, and Central and South America. Her first mission was to Ethiopia. Soon after, she won a Special Academy Award 
for her hard humanitarian work in 1993, but she wasn't able to receive it due to her death on January 20th, 1992. Her dear friend and da fashion designer, Hubert D. Giverich, arranged for Hepburn to be brought from her home in Switzerland to California. He sent his private jet for her filled with flowers. She soon died at her home on January 20th, 1992. After hearing of her death, Judge Gregory Preck tearfully read Hepburn's favorite poem, Unending Love on camera. She died due to a cancer in her abdomen called pseudomyxoma peritia, sorry, also known as PMP. This attack, this cancer was very rare and it killed her within a matter of months. Thank you.